it is yet another episode of the Your Time Show. I am Fatima Jawara. I'm not alone in the studios today. I have two handsome gentlemen with me, and I'll allow them to introduce themselves. Hello, viewers. Um, welcome back to another episode of Your Time Show. Um, I can assure you that today we are going to have a very interactive session um, with a very great guest that we have here today. Thank you. Okay, now I'll, I'll allow the guest himself to introduce. Uh, hello viewers, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Cherno Gay. Uh, this is my first time. Fatima, thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm a poet. Uh, I'm a law student at the University of the Gambia and currently I work for the TRRC. Happy to be here. Oh my gosh, I'm so, you know, thrilled to have you right here, Cherno Gay. Okay, Cher, I want you to take us through your your talent as a whole because this is a show that we'll be exploring raw and hidden talents and your talent I know is not hidden but then I believe it is raw so kindly take us through that okay um, uh, I'm a poet as I said uh, it's considered a talent I think it is one of the fastest growing areas in this country now because every school you go to you have poetry clubs you know you have poetry competitions now every event you go to you have poetry uh, I started writing when I was in high school, Kaur uh, Senior. I started in grade 11, writing and performing, of course, because uh, it's spoken word poetry, not just written. So I started in high school, and when I graduated, I came here. When I came here, poetry was just picking up a little bit. We had a little bit of it at Nusrat, mostly. People like Lam and Barrow, if you would remember, yeah. And then, on the, you know, uh, I was on that, and then I met people like Omar Cham, uh, Lala Toure, that came later actually, but in the earliest days it wasn't even Omar, it was me, it was Lamin Baro, and then we had people like Salim, and at the time they had this small club called uh, The Clouds. Yeah. Right? We, we organized the first poetry event called I Speak, mm -hmm. and then I remember Latirka used to do this thing uh, called Word of Mouth uh, okay. with Black Magic, we also mm -hmm. used to go there. So. This is how it started. We were forming small clubs and then they would collapse and then we would pick something else. But virtually that is how it grew. For me, uh, poetry growing in the combos when I came here, mm -hmm. the people who I actually rolled with used to be one of the most solid used to be Lamin Baro. I think you know yeah, yeah, They call yeah, him the rainbow poet. poet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really good. We, we did a lot of crazy things together. Sure. And then it was very, very interactive because I got to know you via that, I believe, at the yeah. Gambia Mall. Exactly. That which you had to come to my school and then yeah. That was that was actually the second I speak we did at the, at the Mall of Gambia. Yeah. The first I speak we did at uh, African Kitchen around uh, Pajara, is it? No, Kololi. Okay. African Kitchen. Then we had the second one at Mall of Gambia. Yeah. That was the clouds doing the sure. I speak series. Yeah. We had I speak, I speak, I speak was. Yeah, and that was an interactive session whereby you came to my school and introduced the slam circle. Yes. <laughs> so how did that end up? Okay, this is what happened. So um, during all these interactions, right, what happened is Fatu Ileka Moloshi was working at GRTS and she had an invested interest in poetry. At the time, Amamo Sabale was the director general of GRTS. So she introduced the idea of the poetry slam. Yeah. Mamadou Sabale supported it and then we went to the first poetry slam. It was me, Lamin, Omar, and a host of others, Lala, Ture, you name it. So what came out of the Poetry Slam was we wanted a group of poets working together. So I sold them the idea of the Slam Z, which they bought. So we had, a, we had the Slam Z as a poetry club. We had me, Lamin, Lala, Omar, Cham, and a host of other poets. Oh, we used to have this weekly show on Choice FM, which was good. So what we, what we wanted to do with, with the slums was have subclubs in school and have you know, trained kids in high school in creative writing and, and stage performances. So that is what brought us to your school, Masul. I remember actually we had a couple of sessions, about three right. sessions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, but what happened is, you know, university started, work started, and we started scattering. Everybody was started doing something different. We we're going to school, going to work at the same time. And then, so it became really, really difficult to, you know, keep the group together. So that's, that's exactly what happened. Okay, um, I know I have so much to ask you, but I'll allow Ibrahim. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gay, for, um, for that great deliberation. I also have a question. As a good and a great artist, we all know that because probably this is the first time meeting you, but I, of course I heard about you. A uh, good a poet and a good artist. But one thing that I understand is all your works, all your spoken word pieces are in this language. What is, it, what is, it, what is the motive behind that? Okay, um, so, <laughs> so, uh, so I am Fuller, right? Uh, I'm, I'm Fuller. Uh, are you a fuller? Uh, so I am fuller. Actually, the full name is Cherno Abdurrahman. <laughs> so I am fuller, right? Uh, my wall of is not very strong, to be honest. Uh, that is one. I cannot speak Mandinka at all. 
uh, I, I, I do poetry in Fulham, very rarely. Like, uh, no, I did. That was the past, um, uh, what is it called? We had it at, uh, right here, uh, at Q City, right? Uh, that was the, uh, the Full Bay Africa. Okay, yeah. We had about 5,000 people. People came from Guinea, Nigeria, you name it. And then I was asked to do a piece. It was amazing, right? It was my first Fulham piece, but I think I'm going to do more. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. So you're going to amaze yeah, But the idea okay. is, um, uh, for me, I, I, I am concerned with consistency. Mm -hmm. And I understand not everybody in the Gambia can speak English, that is true. Mm -hmm. But we have other poets doing poetry in Wolof, in Mandinka, you know, Omar does Wolof, yeah. does Mandinka. Uh, for me, I, I, when I'm doing it, I want to do it in my strongest language. And, and when it comes to writing, I know. I am born for as my mother tongue. I understand the language perfectly well. Okay. But when it comes to writing and playing with language, English is what I am best at. Which is why I write in the language I'm most comfortable in, and, and, and that is English. Because it, it allows me to paint the kind of message I want to paint the way I want it. Uh, yeah. yeah, so basically that's the reason why I do most of my, all of my poetry in English. Okay. No wall of no full no Mandinka. Uh, yeah, but, but I will definitely be doing more fuller stuff. <laughs> and I also have this question. Um, when you were saying something, um, I mean, we were saying something here that like you studied this with Lamin Boro and, and you have a team. Like, personally, I have the feeling that um, the poetry of Gambian poetry today is centered around a team, and that is you and you have done that in Yensen. Because looking at it, any mega program that happens that requires performance, you, Omar Lal, or whatever, you are the only people who perform. For. Okay, what is the reason behind it? Because we have young poets, of course, that you can attest that, that are very good. And I think they should be given um, um, the green light to go ahead in order to showcase what they have. Why are you, why are you taking up those responsibilities and you are? And you are just letting these young people sound really yeah. Okay, okay, this is, this is true. Um, personally, I have a lot of amazing young poets. A lot of, uh, and they're friends of mine close. Uh, prominent among them is uh, uh, Abdullah Cham, Nusrat. He's amazing. Uh, you have uh, Alaji, uh, this guy, Boj, from Gambia High. He's really, really good. I know a host of uh, poets who are coming up already. Good. Which is why she was asking me just before the interview. I am seeing a lot of competition in this country. Why are you not taking part? This is the reason. Like, for example, not long ago, UN75 yeah, had a competition. Yeah. Now, imagine UN75 is having a poetry competition. All these all this, uh, high school kids want to take part. And now I go there, Chernoge, want to register as a competitor. Okay. What will happen? They will feel intimidated. Okay. I may not even be a better poet than them, but yeah. I am more exposed. I have a bigger name. So the fact that Chernoge is there might intimidate some of them. Okay. So because of this thing, we have this is from taking part in national competitions competitions. All of these competitions you see now, you see high school poets going there. You don't see us going because you want to give them a chance. The reason why you see us at events though performing, those are not competitions. Mm -hmm. And what happened is those come as specific particular invitations directed to us, right? Uh, like uh, the, the, UN, uh, the UN Day is coming up right now. Mm -hmm. I got a call yesterday that they want me to go and perform. And I'm getting paid for that. It's where I get my money. Mm -hmm. So I cannot be like, no, I'm too big a poet. I cannot come and perform for UN, right? And I'm, I'm just saying, I will accept it, mm -hmm. right? It's where I make my money from. Uh -huh. I got the call. I said, look, put my name on the list. I'll be performing. Okay. So I'm going to write something for you. And I'm going to go and perform. And I'm going to get my money and go home. Yeah. So if an invitation directly come for an other poet, then they're going to pick the invitation. Yeah. No, but the thing is, but, uh, Pamela, let me come. The thing is, yes. um, you as a big poet in the country, yes. you, know, you know those problems. Uh -huh. Obviously, um, these are things that have been said. Yes. You know, it's high time we start categorizing poets based on television and competition. You cannot just call for a challenge or a competition where every poet comes in. Because at some point, this UN75, I can tell you, one of the decisions that influence um, uh, also the passing force award winner, like the winners, you know, there's this guy who is a great service student, probably because of your age or whatsoever. Yeah. Not because of your type, but because of your age, you are taking part in this. They will tend to push you. And to let you know this, I, um, I faced something. Out of the 101 points that were in the competition, I was around 50. But, what? but the day I went to the competition, instead of giving me the price of 50, what? They packed me and they took those who are nine and give them a award. And okay. they are girls and they are called Quest Dixon. Okay, I'll come in no. there. Uh, if no, I'm yes. uh, no, no, no. uh, we'll talk about, no, we'll talk about the UN75. No, 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 no. we'll, we'll talk about the UN75. Okay, we'll go for the short break. We'll be right back. We'll talk about this UN75 competition. Yeah, we'll stay that. tuned. Welcome to the Gambia. This is where we call the land of smiling coast.
welcome back from that short break and we are right here with the same people and obviously I'm with none other than Chetna Gay, the full of the good luck and also my gentleman Kokono, Ibrahim Aventaboy. Let's continue. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. we were talking about the age 75. Uh, there are things that when they happen, uh, sometimes we expect you as uh, the most known poets mm -hmm. to step up and speak. No, that was not the only issue. The first one that I written, because I started poetry five months back, within the five I was able to make four videos or so. But the first challenge that I attended was the was the COVID-19 online, and that challenge was a mess. To be candid, that was a mess. You cannot say this is a video that win a whole national online um, uh, COVID-19 challenge, and that video you declared is not fit to be played on any media house. Something must be wrong. Okay, let me let me come in here. Okay. First of all, um, first of all, let's let's talk about. Let, let me just say something about the the, the COVID nineteen challenge. I wasn't a part of it. I wasn't part of the organizers. I wasn't. I, I only saw the videos. Mm -hmm. Actually, some of the poets who took part were friends of mine. Mm -hmm. So what happened is they they tagged me on Facebook when they posted because it required you to have a lot of likes and all that. Yeah. So some of the poets tagged me. But I didn't even know the competition was going on. I didn't judge, I didn't organize, I wasn't a part of it. I was as oblivious to what was happening as you. What happened with the UN 75 is this. I was called, Omar was called, and we were asked to come and help with the coordination. Actually, I was part of the people who went on the nationwide tour to popularize, to make sure people got the idea of the whole thing, so that you know, we can have participation from the provinces. So we did a nationwide tour, and we came back. When we came back from the nationwide tour, they cut us out of the competition. We didn't have any updates about what was going on. So, how was I supposed to help in the coordination? You called me to coordinate and then you take me out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I stayed and I mind my business. Yeah, so sure. I was actually what happened, it was a day before the prize, uh, the award ceremony. Mm -hmm. They called me and said I was supposed to come and perform at the award ceremony, mm -hmm. right? Did you see me there? No, no, no. No, because it was disrespectful. Yeah. Okay. Right? So, Hangalun, there was all of digital uh, different hostile. It's what was going on, right? Okay, Che, you're not feeling it. That's all of a sudden. This one is the only one. They gave us responsibility okay. uh -huh. and took the responsibility from us. Mm -hmm. Right? Now they went and did their own thing. Now you wait until tomorrow is the event. You call me and say, come and perform. I'm not a magician. I cannot come up with a poem at night and then go and perform the yeah, same yeah, poem but, at but the wait, event. Wait, so uh, what I'm trying to say okay. is this. And then I receive a lot of complaints, mm -hmm. right, directly from people. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, a close friend of mine who, I, you know, we, I'm not mentoring him, okay. but I support a lot. He sends me his work. I go through it. I, you know, give advice. He was taking part. He did an amazing video. They didn't even put him on the top 30. Is it top 30 or top 15? Yes. The one day that they, that, that, they were, that they invited to the award ceremony. Okay. And he did amazing level. His video wasn't even considered. He was complaining. I said, I cannot do anything. Complain to the team that organized. Okay. So there was a lot of things went wrong with the competitions. Okay? But what I want you people to know is that I did not organize. You and own the event. Okay? okay? They invited me. They, they, they gave it to a team to handle. This team came from NCAC, National Center for Arts and Culture. Yes. National Center for Arts and Culture invited me and Omar to come and help with the coordination. Then... Along the way, we went halfway, and then they, 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 it's like we were no longer there. Okay. They gave us responsibility and took it away, so yeah, we couldn't do anything the, about the, it. The, 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 the winners were declared based on a selective uh, favor, favor. This is what I don't know, because what they but said... You know, no, they, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I wasn't there. I wasn't part of the judges. What happened was they said we were even supposed to be part of the judges. Okay. Because to be honest, the old men we have in NCAC, they, write, they wrote poetry. But we brought spoken word poetry yes, to sure, this sure, level. Sure, sure. So nobody is in a better position to judge a spoken word competition right now than me and Amar Sham. Okay. And they brought us in and they said we were going to be part of the judges. Then they caught us up. They just sent a list of uh, 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 the winners. Mm. They didn't even consult us. Mm. Mandama talk, like, then I saw this list of people who have won in the group that we had, the group chat. I didn't even comment because then, Sufeke, you said I would be a part of it and you did make me a part of it. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. So a lot of things went wrong and a lot of complaints came to me too. Yeah. I told them, look, I am in no position to answer any of these questions. So, so now, um, um, this is very interesting. And then, now, Mr. Gay, I want you to talk to my best boys because this was an attempt in order to separate points, to put points in, in disorders because some of the points may have great based on English over this. Like, for example, doing that to me, yes. if I was not mature enough, I would have used her as a graduate and you know as a point who are young girls doing great out there. Now, I want you to talk to us, or you tell us this. What can we do as poets to, to be under one umbrella and, and, and start having events for poetry? I think it's been a long time now. We don't have poetry events. We, yeah, the, the COVID-19 stopped a lot of things. We had a lot of activities. Look, personally, after my album launch, so we were, I was talking to her before the interview. I went low-key, really, because um, I'm a university student. I have 
you know, I work for the TRRC and the work requires a lot. You go to work every day, you have a lot of activities. So it was hard to focus on poetry. After my album launch, I made a promise that I was going to start the uh, Open Stage Poetry Festival. This is going to be like the open mic. It's mm -hmm. going to happen once every year, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be a competition. We're going to have all the poets across the country come around and then have a whole day of amazing performances. Exactly. Nobody's competing anybody, but we'll just give you a national platform where you can showcase you know, what you have, talk to the people through poetry. This is what we wanted to do. Now, these competitions that keep coming up and then we have discrepancies in them, what I want people to know is the competition is not where you go, it's not necessarily about the winning. It has not been that for me. Yeah. Look, the Poetry Slam brought me and Omar, Lamin Baro, Lala and a lot of other people together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What came out of it is friendship. Mm -hmm. Omar now is one of my closest friends. Do you sure. understand? We live together actually. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And what happened? It was poetry. And Omar won. Mm -hmm. He's the one who won the Poetry Slam. Mm -hmm. I had my own complaints in the Poetry Slam final. I had to blame my own self. I did my own, you know, nonsense. And then this is, th that's what happened, okay. right? I made my own mistake. Well, I was being arrogant in a way, okay. right? <laughs> I learned my lessons. Mm -hmm. Omar won. Mm -hmm. We became friends. We didn't fight over it. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we congratulated him. We partied. Mm -hmm. I was there. Lamin Baro was there. Sure. Do you understand? We formed the Slamsy after the competition. Mm -hmm. So if we can become brothers after being put together to compete against each other, then why can't the younger poets do it? Mm. You, you can go to a competition with someone, somebody, and they will win, and you can still be friends. You can still work together to build something. Mm. Do you understand? So r right now, what I want people to know is you don't just go into a competition for winning a trophy or a prize. Mm -hmm. Personally, if you put me on a national platform, the most important thing for me is to make sure the ideas I have the amazing work I have, I want the world to see that. Whether, whether you give me a trophy or you give me a check or you give me a prize of whatever kind, as far as I've been able to send my message out there, for me that is a win. Yes. But, 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 but now I understand what it's about you. Yes. Now, poetry, what? It's more of an enterprise for you than passion. Because you, you are saying something yeah. if you are not paid. No, it's, I, it's more of okay. an, an okay. area okay. Yeah. where you need financial gains, not only your passion in order to sensitize or to talk to people. True. I started poetry as a passion. Actually, I'm working for the TRRC right now. My work largely, I was employed largely because I was a poet. Lala was employed by the TRRC largely because he was a poet. Omar Cham, we work at the, we have the same job description. We are paid the same salary. We work in the same office. Okay. Me, Omar, and Lala. Lala actually left a couple of months ago. But we all came because of poetry. My point is this. I started poetry because I had a passion for it. Because I think I have a message to send. And I'm sending that message. But if, for example, an organization like UN is organizing an event, and they pay their people for everything they do, and they want me to come and speak for them, they want me to sit at night, write a poem, put it in my head, memorize over 700 words, stand on stage and say all of them without missing one single word, you're going to goddamn pay me for it. Oh, really? Do you understand? Sure. Musicians do music for passion, but they get paid for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want you tomorrow, you say you started five months ago, I want you to be able to receive a call or receive an email saying, we're sending you a contract to come and do a poem for us and we are paying you this amount of money. Mm -hmm. And I want you to have the power to say, look, I'm not going to do it for 5,000, I'll do it for 10,000. Mm -hmm. And then they will pay you that amount of money because it is a talent and you spend time on it, you don't do it for free. Sure. So I have the passion, mm -hmm. but I'm going to get paid for doing it. Sure. If I get invited at a high school to come and do it, I don't need money. For the past three years, every year, Nusrat, I joined their, the, the Nusrat, right? Yeah. I joined their poetry competition. Mm -hmm. I, every single year, their new recruits, Peer Health Club, I train them. Mm -hmm. For the past three years, mm -hmm. I don't get paid a dime and I don't ask for it because that is cool. Mm -hmm. But huge institution like UN, like Action Aid, you call me to come and do and to come to your event and perform. I'm gonna get paid because everybody in your office is getting paid. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So poetry is passion, right? But mm -hmm. I want people. I want, we should be able to make a living out of it. Mm -hmm. It requires a lot. How much time did you spend to make the video you made for the competition? And, and, and not I just the, the video is going to get a lot, take a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But where does your idea come from? You sit at night writing, you write a line, I don't like this one. You have to think and then replace it, edit, memorize, work on your stage performances. Man, that's a lot of investment. You got to get paid. And I am, I am happy that we are pushing it hard because now poetry is, is going far. Before, they will ask you to come to an event. They will tell you, we'll give you transport. If on you perform, they give you 300. It's disrespectful. Sure. Do you understand? Know, so we pushed it, you know, especially me and Omar and Lala, we pushed it. You invite us, you we'll say, how much are you paying? You say this, I say, we're not doing it for that ad. And now we get paid. I have been paid up to 15,000 for spending three minutes on stage. Share again. You know? I like the lenses that you use. Yeah. You know, okay. yeah. So we, we, have to, yeah, we have to get paid. But Share again. But let, let wait, wait, yeah. do, you, do, you believe, do you believe that there are younger boys better than you coming up? I actually don't believe I'm better than anybody. That is, that is the whole thing for me, poetry, when it comes to poetry. Everybody is a good poet. Everybody has a message. 
and everybody knows how they want to pose and send their message out there. You have your message, you know how, what you want to tell the people. Mm -hmm. So you cannot judge that against the message I have and how I want to tell it to the people. Sure. So the idea of I'm better than this poet, I'm better than the poet, doesn't work for me. Okay. As far as I am concerned, I have a message I want to send. Mm -hmm. And nobody is going to tell me how I'm going to send it out there. Definitely. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And on that basis, you cannot judge me against another person. I will not even accept it. And for me, competition doesn't work for me. I, I love competing. I love winning and all of it. I have competed. I have won. I have lost. I have learned my lessons. And I am right here right now because of, because of a certain thing. There's a consistency in what I do. I have a, I have a message and I will send it. Do you understand? You have a message and you will send it. Now, I am more popular than a lot of poets. Do you understand? Does it mean I'm better than them? It just means I have been doing it longer and probably I have been pushing a lot harder. Mm -hmm. We started with a lot of poets. You don't know any of their names sure. because they didn't take it as seriously as I did. Yeah. Do you understand? So I don't think we are going to judge who is better than who because of who is more popular or who is more well-known. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Okay. I'm freaking good at what I do. No, I know you're good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then I'll accept that from him because I got to know spoken word via him. Champion of the others, later, later Lalen Gis, but for him, him like his own and this other boy, the rainbow boy. Yeah, and I got to know spoken word via him. But nevertheless, Chandrage, you did mention that come so you have the talent, you should be paid for it. Mm -hmm. But for Bologna, you people have the exposure, you can demand. The uh, younger poets in Yubuga demand and your gisner like they're very low down there, so they couldn't demand more. True. Yeah. This is this is this is what I wanna bring in. Okay. Which is why he was saying something really important. Which is why when we get invited to events, wallahi, I'm gonna say this. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say this. Omar is not here, right? Mm -hmm. Mostly when, when we get invitation, we want five poets to perform. Okay. This has happened many times, okay. right? We, we will look at the budget, we will look at whatever it is they want people to perform on. Mm -hmm. Let's say if they say we want poets to come and do spoken word in Wolof and something like that, mm -hmm. I will say, okay, uh, Omar, you take this, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if they say five poets, mm -hmm. then I will say, Omar, you go, I go, then we will go to high school mm -hmm. and pick some of these upcoming poets. Mm -hmm. uh, we have actually cancelled our names completely from events mm -hmm. and brought these young poets to come. Mm -hmm. Like at the TRC, we had this uh, activity where we were supposed to use poets and artists to perform. Mm -hmm. We are working for the TRC and we are, one of the, we are some of the top poets in this country. Mm -hmm. We cancelled our names completely. You know who we brought? Mm -hmm. We brought Kebambai, we brought uh, 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 this guy from Nusrat, uh, Abdullah Cham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ab yeah, Abdullah Cham. We, yeah, we picked high school poets and these people were paying really, really good money. I cannot tell you, but they paid more than the top price at the uh, UN75. That's how much they paid. So we cancelled our names because we work for the TRRC and we're going to get a lot of opportunity with the TRRC because we're working there. So we brought these poets in. So we, we, are, we are trying to give young poets opportunities. But the point is this. Right now, I can say, UN can say, come perform for 3,000. I say, I'm doing it for 5,000. I can argue because I am there. Yeah. But a poet who is not well known cannot do that. Sure. So what we can do is when I have an opportunity, when they say we want two poets, three poets, I can say, okay, I'm coming. Then I can go and pick a poet who is upcoming and then put them on the list. And this is what we have been doing. But one thing I can tell you is the COVID-19 is coming to an end. We are going to have the Open Stage Poetry Festival, inshallah. And every single poet in this country, we have an opportunity to audition for it. We will want to give a platform to every young poet, but you have to prove yourself. Okay? We cannot organize a national event like that and put every Tom, Dick and Harry on stage. Especially those who will become like, oh, Africa, my motherland. <laughs> I cannot do that. Okay, now, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's talk about you. Me, okay. How many spoken word pieces have you published so uh, far? Hundreds of them. I have written hundreds of poems. Actually, I have. Uh, I want to do a book, right? Omar is doing a book, so we're going to wait until Omar's own stuff goes. Money, you, I notice whatever you say, you say Omar. Why Omar, huh? Uh, you're big, he's, a, he's a friend. We work together. Okay. Um, so, but when it comes to spoken word, actually, mostly you write a poem, right? Mm -hmm. And you were inspired to write it. Mm -hmm. And then you go to, they invite you to an event and you realize this poem doesn't fit this event. Right? For example, let's say they invite you to a gender activity event, let's say an event about gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. You cannot go there talking about love, it doesn't make no, sense. No, it doesn't work. Good. So mostly what happens is you write all these poems, you pack them, but you get an invitation for a week or so and then you can write a poem based on the theme of the event. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you can you can go there and have it. I have a YouTube channel. It is not very active. There are a lot of videos there you can find. Chernoge the poet, you can you can find it on YouTube. But the idea is, I, I have written a lot. Honestly, I have written a lot, a lot, a lot of poems. I have a lot of them packed somewhere. Uh, but the idea is, we have not been having a lot of events, and you know, have shooting videos is really really expensive. Sure. And hang on, you we are broke kids. We are, we are university students, so everybody is broke. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, before we go, uh, Chernoge, I heard this from people. Not just when, but majority of them are talking about it. That's a PC. I usually very long, very long, and usually they came a point that they're boring. 
So how do you feel about that? Getting such comments outside? I like the critics. Okay. Uh, it it is good. It's how we grow. Yeah. You know, you cannot you cannot grow without receiving critics from people. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it's true. Sometimes my my poems are long mm -hmm. most of the time, mm -hmm. uh, and they're very. Yes, it can become boring. So what happens is uh, we try to minimize it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But also, again, I would, I hate sending half a message. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for me, it's not just about the round of applause and the claps and the stand innovations. Mm -hmm. It's about if I, if I start to tell you something, I should be able to finish it. Mm -hmm. right? But also, we can do that without the poem being so long that it ends up being boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my poems are not that long no more. I am trying to balance it as much as possible. The message gets across, okay. but it is not so long that people would get bored. Yes. What is your closing remarks? Please. My closing remarks is this. If you have something you're doing, it doesn't just have to be poetry. If you're passionate about anything, get good at it. Really, 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 really good. Uh, for poets, I would say read. Yeah, get a book, read. Know something you didn't know. This is, this is going to help you. Because if you're going to write, you must, have, you must have to read. You cannot just start writing about stuff you don't know about. What will happen is you're going to write, you may, it may be rhyming, the words may be beautiful, but your message is going to be so basic, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. If you keep telling people something that they already know, they, they, they don't listen to you. Mm -hmm. So there are two things. It's either you, t to captivate people to, to go up, it's either you tell people something they don't know, mm -hmm. or remind them of something they forgot, mm -hmm. or thirdly, tell them something they know in a way they didn't. Mm -hmm. it, has to be, it has to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So as I said, I say this all the time, right? Everybody can have cement and sand and land and everybody, but it takes an architect to build a house. Sure. So everybody can speak English, everybody can speak Mendinke and Wolof, but it will take a poet to write a poem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's not just about the message, it's about how you put the words together. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, especially for the, for the upcoming poets, you don't have to use big words to have a beautiful poem. Mm -hmm. Just use simple words in an amazing way. Sure. That's what sure. it takes. That's what I believe. Yeah. Okay, we come to the end of the show. It was really interactive and interesting from the classic kid, Chernogi. Till I come your way next, I'm Fatima Jawara. Don't forget to subscribe, like, 